would tell you it'll be a long, long, long time before most people would want to substitute for the original equipment with anything engineers can make. Um, which is not to say that we will all be lining up for great engineering solutions when the ones we have get old or broken. But, you know, the original equipment, the natural capability of muscles and tendons driven by uh, energy coming from chemical reactions, moving in and out through blood. I mean, there's a lot of, it's pretty hard to beat what nature did. I don't think you'll see people lining up anytime soon to replace real hands with prosthetic ones. Was it overhyped? I think there were. There were uh, a lot of crazy circumstances, most of which were probably a slow news day and then snippets of really big time fakers making good comments about this thing. And because I guess I had other genuine accomplishments when people put credible statements next to somebody that was otherwise credible, uh, the thing got a life of its own. I did not spread any of that. When I said that was a leak to the press, it really was a leak. It was not some brilliantly orchestrated plan. We were not looking for hype. We were not looking for PR. It really was an embarrassing, ridiculous overhype, which I knew would eventually end up with people saying, you mean it doesn't beam people to Mars? It doesn't <laughs> turn lead into gold? society, kids can do whatever they want, whatever they think is fun and rewarding. We need to make science and technology something they celebrate, something that they find satisfaction in, something that they believe is accessible. So since we are a sports crazed nation, since we love entertainment, let's create an organization that does for science and technology what the NCAA or the Olympic Committee do for sports and entertainment. It proves to them, particularly women and minorities, that in fact technology is accessible. It is fun. It is rule. It is for everybody. It's not something that's only available to weird, geeky, odd geniuses. And first gives all of these kids a fun, exciting way to get a sense of what the world is like for people that think and create and understand technology. And it they're not really building robots, they're building relationships with serious adults from the technical community. They're building self-confidence, they're building an awareness of what's possible. And it's an enormously effective way to change their attitudes, to give them a sense of what's possible. And that's why you do it. If a politician comes to see me, I talk to a politician about first. You know, there's two kinds of politicians in this country. The ones that support first and the ones that don't matter. The same thing that's wrong with engineering curriculum is wrong with most curricula. It is not experientially based. It doesn't have metrics associated with how well you understand things, how well you can do things, how much it helps you develop judgment and passion for doing things. We need to make education something that is compelling to people, that they're willing to put a lot of effort into it to put a lot of passion into it, to understand why they're doing it, to be able to come away from it with uh, a sense that they now have the power to do the right things and then go off and do them. I think the next great robot won't be perceived as a robot. It's, you know, if somebody were to say to you today, what's the next great computer, you'd scratch your head. If somebody said to you 30 years ago, computers, where do people use computers? Oh, um, you know, in the early days of PCs, I keep my books on it. Oh, really? Yeah, like you need this computer to multiply or add or subtract. Or women would, I'll keep my recipes in the future instead of a book. And mm -hmm. remember, there were those early <laughs> desperate attempts to rationalize why somebody needed a thing that could have memory and compute and be attached to a printer. Where isn't there a computer today? It's in your camera, it's in your video game, you know, it's on your desk. Computers are no longer seen as some odd thing, they're just part of the infrastructure of life. 
interactive robotic capability will become part of the infrastructure of what we do. And robotics will be ubiquitous and subtle and it will morph into different things. And it won't be suddenly you'll come in and the, the Jetsons version of a robot will finally be there. Uh, there won't be R2D2 and CPI. I, I don't think that will ever happen. And that will not be the metric by which we decide what a robot is or how many they are.